The Secrets of Earning Teachers of a Flat Earth How did the creators of the Flat Earth earn their first dollars? Good afternoon. Welcome to my channel. The History of the Flat Earth or the First Scoundrels of the Flat Earth. So I wanted to call this my review. The fact that there were supporters of Flat Earth Society, there are many positive consequences. For example, thanks to society, those who knew absolutely nothing about the planet on which they live, because of all kinds of education reforms, are trying to actively fill this gap in all available ways. The universal rejection of boring books and the boundless trust in His Majesty the Internet are bearing fruit. And what is negative in this pseudo-scientific teaching? In order to get an accurate answer to this question, it is necessary to lift the curtain and illuminate some moments from the lives of people who they do not like to discuss. Some, because their true intentions should not be the property of the crowd, others, crowd, because of the denial of the true role they play in this representation. In my review, there is no refutation that the earth is flat, and there is no evidence that the earth is round. In fact, the shape of the earth does not matter, because it does not depend on us people and can no longer affect our lives more than it has already influenced and continues to influence. Looking at the active promotion of the idea of flat earth, many wonder, why? However, such answers as PR, earnings on advertising and sincere belief in the flat earth of people with little education, we are not interested. However, immediately give the answer, this is ineffective, the truth obtained unsubstantiated way, not can claim truth. Only facts matter. And the facts we'll look at are easy to check on Google. Everything else, including its place in this mechanism called life, everyone should determine himself. I will begin with the personality of the person who attracted attention and earned the first money on the tale of Flat Earth. Samuel Robotham, who earned his living by reading various scientific lectures, once came across an interesting physical phenomenon, at first glance, contrary to the theory of the spherical shape of the Earth. Samuel noticed that under certain conditions some objects, moving away from the viewer, do not hurry to hide behind the horizon. Finding a flat area of the water surface and sending her boat with a 5-meter mast, Samuel was able to observe the flag on it at a distance of 6 miles, about 10 kilometers. The telescope was only 20 inches, 50.8 centimeters, above the water. It was in 1838. Did Robotham know about the properties of light to bend around obstacles and refract, discovered by Grimaldi Francesco Marie in 1665 under the name of diffraction? Considering the fact that Robotham lectured on the ground, it can be assumed that he knew. However, he came up with his own original theory which confirmed the flat shape of the Earth, explaining the sunset. Samuel Robotham heads the Oanita colony, and after being accused of abuse and banished, he becomes an itinerant lecturer and is printed under the pseudonyms Dryan, S. Golden, Parallax, and Dr. Burley. According to his contemporaries, he had wit and ingenuity. However, he had a bad reputation as a cynic and a liar. By the way, None of the sources I have read has a word about Mr. Robotham's education, only about wit and some ingenuity. In 1849 Samuel releases his 16-page pamphlet, Zetetic Astronomy, Astronomy Estetisches Kaya, which by 1881 was supplemented by up to 430 pages and was renamed, The Earth is Not a Ball. However, it should be noted that the only confirmation of the flat Earth, as it was, and remained, the same experiment in its various interpretations. No scientific approach was out of the question. Most contemporaries are inclined to believe that he did not believe in his theory and used it only for manipulations with people. In the early 19th century, England was awash with various estatishes key societies. It was perceived as some kind of alternative widespread thinking, now called creationism. At this time, Robotham creates a Zethetic society first in England, then in New York, where they were sent more than a thousand copies of his book. After the death of Robotham in 1884, Lady Elizabeth Blunt founded on his ideas the Universal Zetetic Society, the purpose of which, the dissemination of knowledge related to natural cosmogony in support of scripture, based on practical scientific research. 
so the idea gets a powerful religious background. In 1888, Scotsman John Alexander Dowie began to develop the idea of a flat land in America. In 1895, he founded the Christian Catholic Apostolic Church sect in Chicago. It is he who manages to achieve the greatest success using the idea of a flat earth. Therefore, it deserves the most careful analysis. Why did you need this idea? The idea of a flat earth helped to create a niche in religion and to filter the necessary contingent in Chicago. As it was in fact, the official history is silent. No one likes to brag about such phenomena. However, to collect from a kaleidoscope of known facts the true picture of what is happening is not difficult. So, the story tells that at the beginning of its activities, Dowie becomes influential in Chicago. His enemies are dead, silent or in prison. The police, who repeatedly arrested him, later became his support and fulfilled all his whims. The mayor and other officials were elected at Dowie's request. Divine healing was widely preached, where Dowie was the chief healer. The city was divided into districts. Teams of preachers worked in each district to promote the gospel. John himself proclaimed himself prophet Elijah and apostle. The sect developed rapidly and Dowie eventually realized his dream of creating a Christian community. In 1901, in the city of Zion he built on the shores of Lake Michigan, 40 miles north of Chicago, his community settled down. Doe, forgot about the humble life, which he previously strongly preached and lived in the mansion from 25 elegant rooms, started wearing custom-made magnificent church clothes and in what does not deny. This is the image of a step bender. Dowie proclaimed himself the first apostle of the renewed church of the last time, renouncing his name and starting to sign documents as John Alexander, the first apostle. But shortly after self-appointed, Dowie had a stroke on the stage with which he read his last sermon, then when he left to be treated, a meeting was held in the city of Zion, at which, as a result of the vote, Dowie was displaced. Dowie fought this decision with all his strength, but he never managed to regain his position. He was allowed to live out his days in Salem House, his home, where he lived for many years and fell asleep forever on March 9, 1907. After paralysis, Doe transfers the reins of government to his deputy. In 1906, the head of the sect was Wilbur Glenville Liva, who renamed it the Christian Catholic Apostolic Church. Voliva established a strict regime in Zion and organized control over its 6,000 followers. Thus, women were forbidden to wear short dresses, high heels, bathing suits, use lipstick. Under strict ban were ham, bacon oysters, alcohol and tobacco, banned medicine and pharmacies, not to mention cinemas and other entertainment venues. 22 hours rigidly enforced curfew. Though Livu by all available means defended and promoted the theory of flat earth flock and tried to carry this doctrine as widely as possible. But his sermons were less successful. As a result, after his death in 1942, the most powerful organization that has ever been in the history of flat earth organizations, disintegrated. John Alexander Dowie and later his successor Wilbur Glenville Liven knew exactly the answer to the question why? But only Dowie still knew the answer to the question how? In fairness, we can talk about other participants in the promotion of the idea of flat earth. In 1890 followers Lady Elizabeth Blunt created Universal's Aetetic Society. Universal's Atlantic Society. The Society published the magazine The Earth Not the Globe Review and remained active in the early 20th century. However, no one was able to take off like Dowie, and the activities of the Society gradually faded away. Therefore, the next count in the history of Black Silence, Samuel Shenton. Shenton created his International Flat Earth Society in 1956. He positioned himself as the successor of the Universalist Hattish Chicago Society and headed it as the organizer secretary from his home in Dover, England. However, this idea is very successful not used. Shenton died in 1971, and did not have time to raise it to a sufficient level. Charles Kenneth Johnson inherited part of Shenton's library from Shenton's wife and became president of the International Society of Flat Earth Studies of America and the National Community of the Covenant in California. 
Over the next three decades, under his leadership, the Flat Earth Society grew to 3,500 members. The secret of growth itself is simple, gathering members against the U.S. government and all its agencies, particularly NASA and all scientists. It is here that humanity learns that the landing on the moon, a hoax, all scientists, sorcerers criminals, governments, a grand conspiracy, scientific institutions, engaged in a giant fraud. In total, it turned out that 80% of people are in a conspiracy against the remaining 20%. But it didn't bother Johnson at all. Johnson was an illiterate and impulsive man. The main flat earth arguments based on the interpretation of the Bible. He called himself the last iconoclast. Although scientific explanations and evidence have been offered, and society has expressed its willingness to show scientists the failure of their concepts, the arguments of society did not look convincing enough for serious controversy. Can we consider the activities of the Society of Flat Earth Research successful? In the press, the society was positioned as prosperous. Where did the finances come from? The society constantly distributed leaflets, booklets and conducted propaganda. Even on the basis of the maximum number of members, 3,500 people, each of which made $8.10 for membership, leaves a fairly modest amount of $31,500. On the other hand, according to most sources, Johnson lived almost always below the poverty line. In any case, after his death in 2001, no one wanted to continue his work. It seemed that the war, as he himself said, against the greasy ball was history. However, the wheel of history tends to repeat its lessons over time. Change is only the shell and the actors, which depends on what clothes and under what slogans will be organized this grand movement. Success depends only on the goals and true desires of the central performers and those involved. It is unlikely that most of them fully understand and realize what kind of baton they swing. But the awareness of their place in this process, unfortunately, in most cases does not exempt from involvement. A phenomenon in which all participants are involved acts regardless of whether they know about it or not. If you look briefly at the history of the Flat Earth pilgrimage, it cannot be called successful. Could someone or some structure intentionally cultivate and support the movement? To understand this, it is necessary to analyze what is happening as a result of the activities of society, who and why it is necessary. To delve into the backstage games of the powerful of this world, which allow you to control the minds and mood of the crowd, there is no sense. Any attempt to do so will only add water to their mill wheels. Of course, it is very likely to assume that someone supports the movement. But that's another story. For today I have everything. Goodbye, peace to your home, peace to your soul, goodbye.